Generally speaking, the way of the warrior is resolute acceptance of death. In the science fiction novel Dune, Frank Herbert writes, Fear is the mind killer. A phrase originally derived from Shakespeare's play Julius Caesar, where the great general of Rome remarks, A coward dies a thousand times before his death. A brave man dies once. Death looms at every corner of the battlefield. It echoes behind every clash of swords, flashing a smile during the exchange of gunfire. When fear is controlled and overcome by courage, it can be a good thing. Fear can heighten our senses and keep us alive, narrowly escaping Hades' dark embrace. But when fear is greater than courage, a man freezes and fails to do his duty. If he should break ranks and run, he leaves his comrade vulnerable to the enemy charge. To do their jobs well, soldiers must not let fear control them. Rather, they must control their fear. The warrior must know that death is inevitable, whether it be on the battlefield or in bed. And if the warrior, after fighting with every ounce of their being to prevail, realizes the finality of their fate, they must look death in the eye without granting him the satisfaction of seeing fear, so that even Hades himself should look back with respect. Death smiles at us all. All a man can do is smile back. It is said the warrior's is the twofold way of pen and sword, and he should have a taste for both ways. The way of the warrior extends beyond the art of combat. A warrior without wisdom is just a soldier. To obtain a deeper understanding for the way, the warrior must obtain a deeper understanding of life. Musashi's beliefs are highly tied into Taoism, which actually translates to the way. Much of Bushido, the moral code of the samurai, is based upon Chinese religion and philosophy. To Musashi, the ideal warrior would see the way in a variety of places. He would see the way in the art of drinking tea, the drawing of calligraphy, or the writing of poetry. To him, it was integral for the warrior to immerse themselves in different arts. From one thing, no ten thousand things. It is difficult to realize the true way just through sword fencing. Know the smallest things and the biggest things, the shallowest things and the deepest things. If the warrior's way is the twofold path of the pen and sword, then the warrior must be a scholar as much as they are a soldier, a philosopher as much as they are a warrior. The student of war, in order to truly understand strategy, must include the study of all subjects. With a basic understanding of all things, we can utilize our deductive reasoning and critical thinking to apply what we have learned towards broadening the scope of our abilities. Knowing how to reason properly allows us to know more with less information. You can know a thousand things without truly understanding how to apply that knowledge in your life. Information without context, sight without perception, and knowledge without wisdom is therefore insufficient in developing a deeper understanding of the world. Wisdom, or knowing how to apply knowledge, is the byproduct of reason and something we should all aspire to possess. It is difficult to know yourself if you do not know others. If we understand the psychology of our enemies, our soldiers, and ourselves, we can prevail in every battle, in every war. We must understand the way the mind works and apply those understandings to how we formulate our strategy. If we know our enemy's mentality, we will also know their weaknesses. It is necessary to exploit said weaknesses in order that we obtain every advantage in battle. In knowing our own soldiers' weaknesses, we can select the environment best suited to account for them. If our enemy is tired from a long day's march, it is imperative that we strike before they have had time to rest. On the other hand, if our men are tired and fatigued, we should do everything in our power to delay the battle for as long as possible. In understanding the strengths and weaknesses of others, whether it be friends or enemies, we can better understand our own capabilities. The way of strategy is the way of nature. When you appreciate the power of nature, knowing the rhythm of any situation, you will be able to hit the enemy naturally and strike naturally. Nature is unpredictable and at times even chaotic. 
Murphy's Law states, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. This applies to the battlefield as much as it does to regular life. The fog of war is the uncertainty and constantly changing conditions that are always present in combat. A general's plans must be fluid, as they will constantly need to change based on the situations that occur in battle. The terrain might become uncrossable, reinforcements might be late, the arrival of supplies could be delayed. Therefore, we cannot depend upon constants when developing strategy. In normal life, someone might lose their job without warning, they might get terribly sick or injure themselves working out. The Latin term amor fati, love of one's fate, must be applied to our outlook on life. Popularized by early Stoics such as Epictetus, Marcus Aurelius, and later on even philosophers such as Nietzsche and Camus, the term means not letting the struggles of life put you down. It means accepting anything that happens with courage and determination. Succeeding no matter the conditions, no matter the obstacles in your path. Similarly, Musashi teaches that we must always be prepared for the changes in nature, appreciating its power and unpredictability in order that we can overcome anything, winning in the end. To attain the way of strategy as a warrior, you must study fully other martial arts and not deviate even a little from the way of the warrior. Musashi advocated for the adoption of a stylist style. Bruce Lee's martial arts philosophy of no way as the way illustrates Musashi's thoughts perfectly. In order that you become a complete fighter, swordsman, or martial artist in general, you must have knowledge of all forms of fighting. To limit yourself to one art is to develop weaknesses in a certain aspect of combat. To be a complete martial artist, you must be prepared to learn from anyone or anything and never stray from the way of the warrior. You must make your training synonymous with normal life so that you exist in a constant state of improvement and deeper understanding. Today is victory over yourself of yesterday. Tomorrow is your victory over lesser men. Never stray from the way and always be willing to learn and improve. Instead of engrossing yourself in pleasures and short-term gratifications, think about what you could be doing now to get better. Envision the kind of person you'd like to be several years from now. Are you doing everything you can at this moment to be that person? If the answer is no, let go of your distractions and get back to work. You possess the inner strength to be who you want to be. It's up to you whether you want to use that strength or not. The way is written in many places, resting in plain sight for us to see. Use your perception to know when you have found it, and once you begin the path, the way of the warrior, the way of the philosopher. Never stray from it and stay true to yourself no matter what adversity comes your way. This is The Warrior Philosopher, Building the Foundations of the Warrior Philosophy.